Hey everybody, I'm Nate. And I'm Serena. And we're back at it again with our next uh, installment of our top 50 things before about Walt Disney World. Um, so today we're going to talk about actually number 30 through 21. And that means, folks, only 30 days till vacation. Let's do it. Um, so number 30 on the list is actually, it's kind of ambiguous. It's actually uh, themes. That's actually Am a word, is it? Ambiguous. <laughs> ambiguous is a word. So anyways, the themes are number 30 on our list. Themes meaning just about anything from the ride attractions to the hotels, to the theming of the parks, to the lands within the parks, if you're thinking about Magic Kingdom. Mm. I mean, I, now I will say, we are going to Universal for the first time in a decade this time around. But I would argue that Disney does theming best. There's no one that can suck you into a world and make you part of a story quite like Disney can. But like I said, we are going to <laughs> Universal and I've heard some very good things about Harry Potter World. We're, we actually just watched Harry Potter for the first time, uh, believe it or not. Um, but I agree the, the themes are actually really cool and it's not just like the overall theme like you can go places where there's an overall theme But it's really the details when you think about it You know you walk into different situations and you look at like the Tower of Terror for example um, In that little lobby area, which is really cool. You can look at different things and like the chessboard for example The way it's laid out is actually checkmate which, no, it's a stalemate. Oh, it's a stalemate. That's oh, right. Oh, no, is that the pirates? It may be... The pirates are the stalemate. The pirates are, is a stalemate. The checkerboard or actually the chessboard inside the Tower of Terror is actually a checkmate situation. Uh, so, like, those things you really don't notice too often, but if you take a couple minutes to, like, look at the detail and think about it, it's really cool stuff. And how do they get those cobwebs to stay through all that heat and humidity? I just want to know how they can go get with it. Disney do they clean? I wonder if they clean. No. No. Cleaning, cleaning ladies on vacation. <laughs> Coming in at number 29, uh, kind of going along with the themes, but as we're gearing up for the holiday season, we love the mysteries around the parks are awesome. And not just the parks, but the hotels as well. Mm. We love to bounce around in all the hotels and take a look at the themes of the Christmas trees. Um, it gives me some ideas for my <laughs> tiny trees. Um, what's your favorite tree? The one that keeps coming to mind is always the Animal Kingdom one. Me too. Same here. I, the Animal Kingdom doesn't do the best for like overall Christmas stuff, but their tree is their really, so cool. really cool. I yeah. love it. Um, so uh, anyways, continue on. Uh, number 28 uh, are actually Mickey ears. And they've really upped their game this year. Or I should say in the recent years, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite variation? My favorite has to be the R two D two Star Wars Ooh, Mickey that's ears. A good one. That's I just, a good one. you know, I don't know. Yeah. Something about it just kind of makes me laugh every time. I'm a sucker for the Kermy or the um, Eeyore. Ooh. Yeah, Eeyore has one now, huh? Yeah, right? they, remember it's the Eeyore head with the with the ears. The Eeyore, oh, it has a tail with the, back. the tail. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> really cute. I just love Eeyore. You gotta find that tail. Yeah. Um, all right, coming number twenty seven is something that is uh, near and dear to Serena's heart. And that would be the champagne in France. I do love it. You got to go in the back. You got to pass the fountain. You got to go up to Le Vigne de France. And you got to get yourself a little glass of Veau of Clicquot. Feel really important. Maybe meander around the Ooh. parfum. Perfume. Perfume? The perfume. Parfum. But parfum, parfum is, is a fancy French way of saying it. Oui. So you <laughs> meander around there. Or, insider tip, go over to the bakery and get yourself the cheese plate. Mm. And then grab yourself a glass of Veuve Clicquot and mm. then sit over by the fountain. Or walk away from the crowds and go to that bridge, you know, where you enter Epcot from um, the Hollywood Studios boardwalk area. Yeah, the bridge between the UK and France is yeah. actually... There's like a split. Yeah. You want to go towards France, um, which is that way. Um, not that way. That way. Or that way. We're not sure. One <laughs> so, of these ways. Grab yourself a cheese plate, grab yourself some champagne, and just enjoy the afternoon. 
So the commitment number 26 is actually all the different gingerbread, we'll call them arrangements around the different hotels. Um, whether it's in the parks, in the parks too. Epcot. Yep. The definitely. American one. Oh yeah. That's a, that's that's a really a cool one. gingerbread that's, house. I think that's the biggest. Yep. If I'm not mistaken. So the first one that we kick it off with is our, my favorite, which happens to be the one that we have flirty in. Yep. My favorite thing is actually to sit there and look at all the different scenes they have around the gingerbread house. And find the Hidden Mickeys. I don't know. I love the Hidden Mickeys. God, I can't get enough. Cannot get enough. Who so. doesn't love a good challenge? <laughs> um, my favorite is the one at the Yacht Club. You mean the Beach Club? The Beach Club. The Carousel? Same thing. Yacht, carousel. Beach Club, all yeah. one place. Yep, the Carousel for me is pretty special. And I just love finding those Hidden Mickeys. But also, the one in the America Pavilion at Epcot is um, huge. Mm. Huge. Absolutely. And I think they sell, they also sell the gingerbread cookies there as well. Yep. Both the uh, America v Pavilion and Grand Floridian both sell gingerbread And they're treats. pretty good. They, actually, the gingerbread cake, I think, is better than yeah. the gingerbread cake. Like yeah, a square, like you know, like a little softer. I really, it's really good. It was way better than I expected. I wouldn't eat the house, but the actual treats they sell in the house are pretty good. And they sell them out of the house. That's how big this crazy. is. Crazy. Out of the house. Anyways. All right, our next one on the list is, well, once again, a Nate favorite. Yeah, this is not my favorite. I'm one of those weirdos. There's like four people in the world that I happen to find one that doesn't like a good old Dole Whip. Mm. How can you mm. go to the Magic Kingdom and not get the Dole Whip? Very easily. Um, my favorite part about it is I recommend the Dole Whip, which is, you know, the tw uh, twist, which is part vanilla, part pineapple, home run every time. But other people like, for example, the, uh, I think it's with the float. Yeah, um, float. Float's really popular. And I found recently that Trader Sam's actually does it with rum. So if you're uh, somebody that likes a good tropical, you know, cocktail. Adult pick-me-up. Jump on that monorail, head over to the Polynesian, and uh, grab that Dole Whip with rum over at, I think it's either Cook's Corner or Trader Sam's. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic. The Dole Whip is, is essentially, you know, it's one of the quintessential Disney Magic Kingdom things. Yeah. Coming in at number 24 for us is Pandora. I mean, you can't argue with the fact that they absolutely recreated something straight out of a virtual reality movie, a CG movie, and they brought it to life. I would agree. I mean, I think it's actually, well, the first step into the quote-unquote future of Disney with all these, we'll call them immersive lands. It's a Immersion buzzword. experiences. Yeah, it's one of those buzzwords right now because of Harry Potter and can all we, this stuff. Can we use that as a hashtag on our Twitter feed? Hashtag Harry Potter or hashtag, hashtag immersion? Hashtag immersion. Disney Ooh. immersion. Demersion. Demersion. Anyways. Hashtag people. Uh, anyways, though, I mean, it's, it's one of those Make things. It thing. <laughs> it's one of those cool things where I think, you know, the land becomes, you know, an attraction in itself. You know, a lot of times when you go to like Tomorrowland, it's really cool, the Magic Kingdom, and the rides are really fun. You know, I, I enjoy Space Mountain Buzz Lightyear, but it's not really like a, it doesn't captivate you when you walk in. It just looks like, you know, a land in a theme park. Where Pandora oh, yeah. is, you know, Oh, tons of little tiny details, whether it's the different uh, luminescence in all the plants to show different, you know, plant life, uh, to the different waterfalls, to the floating mountains, and how it transitions from night to day. And they even put in the different sounds of different creatures. I mean, it's really kind of one of those things that you can, if you want to get lost in it, you can probably get lost into it, looking at all the details, and probably has two of the best animatronics um, in all of Walt Disney World to see. Yeah, the Navi River Journey, the Shaman is, um, uh, man, it it blows me away. I mean, I just, it's like mouth open every single time. And really, that's the only reason to ride that ride, quite frankly. But yeah, no, I agree. I think Pandora's, I particularly like it at night. I think the bioluminescence is, is really well done. Absolutely. Very, and very different. My favorite, Food and Wine Festival, coming in at number 23. Um, if you've never done it, it's uh, amazing. Very busy, though you can hit it at some quieter times, yeah. like Nate said, check the crowd calendars, but uh, they bring in all sorts of different, uh, different types of foods from all sorts of different countries. You get to try them. You can use your snacks um, on your meal plan to try each of these little bites, and they're just outstanding. I mean, some of the ideas that you would never think of putting together, they also sell a food and wine cookbook, which mm -hmm. I usually end up purchasing. Um, and it's just a really great way to showcase Disney's talented chefs and um, bring a little bit of some ethnic flavor to your 
to your typical day. You can often find mm -hmm. us there in the afternoons, almost every afternoon. We usually skip lunch when yep. we're going down for food and wine and we end up just getting a couple little things to snack on around the world. Um, and they've got some really great uh, things to do for the kids because it's not the most exciting thing for kids, but they do things like the ratatouille, uh, you know, veggie search and, and things like that. And you can get your passport stamped and mm -hmm. there's all sorts of collectible things. And for those DBC, um, is it annual pass holders? It's yep. the annual pass holders. Annual pass holders. You get a free gift. Definitely. And what's really cool too is like, if you don't have opportunity to experience during restaurants, so for example, in Canada, they actually bring like the two uh, famous, you know, appetizer and entree out to the booth. Yeah. So you can try the, you know, the cheddar cheese soup and you can try out the Which filet really and, you know, enjoy it that way. You know, yeah. a way to get it like, you know, a much more, you know, quick bite, try it out, not get too full. I mean, really it's Florida cheddar cheese soup when it's 95. It's, it's good. good, but <laughs> it's you, good. You kind of feel, you feel it after about four yeah, or five steps. and you get an appropriate size. Yeah. And they've got things like New Zealand lamb chops. They started adding a Hawaii booth so you can get fresh tuna poke. I mean, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Absolutely. Knocking yeah. it out of the park. So we're staying at, uh, actually, I've caught it, but swift, uh, switching, you know, times a year. We'll go over to Christmas and uh, the Kinoi Processional. Yeah, I think that's my favorite holiday Um I think that's my favorite holiday tradition. Although it's probably the combination of everything at Christmas for me, but there is something about the candlelight processional. It just kind of tugs on your heartstrings a mm. little bit. And you know, if you if you don't get goosebumps and into the true holiday spirit, kinship, friendship, warmth, sharing with friends and family, understanding about caring and kindness, that is to me the, the, the icing on the cake. I think it's, you know, from the singing to the, the music, choirs, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, spoiler alert here, my favorite part's the little uh, French horns when they come out and they play their little tune on the sides. Um, and the celebrities, I mean, to be honest, I mean, they do an amazing job, you know, telling the story and putting their own little twist onto it, their spin, their flair, and you can really see that they enjoy it and they appreciate it. And that to me is, you know, a great thing to see. You get to see somebody not in their natural environment, you know, telling a very historic story that we're all very familiar with, with great cheer, you know, great, you know, energy and overall great emotion. You can see the emotion even in the choir's face when they sing with all the passion they have. And it's cool because they bring in all of the children's youth choirs from all over um, Central Florida. Yep. And um, it's, it's great. It really, it's a, it's a really awesome thing to see. Definitely. So, uh, last one, switching gears, like 180 here. We're going to go to uh, it's a total 180. Totally yeah. 180. You know, it's really kind of, you go from great emotion and passion to uh, fear and terror and. Still great emotion. So, yeah, <laughs> coming in at number 21 is the Yeti. Although I will say, he was much better with the swinging arm. For those of you who didn't get a yep. chance to experience the original Yeti with the swinging arm, mm -hmm. holy cannoli. Cannoli's good. Cannoli's good. Yeah, we've got to keep this PG. Um, rumor on the street, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Disney was maybe trying to fix him. I hope so, because he's built into the side of the mountain, so I know there, there's some engineering challenges there. Um, and darn those, darn gravity, darn those G-forces. <laughs> but, um, man, that Yeti gets me every time. I'm not gonna lie. It, and then the, the, you know, the plummeting drop that oh, occurs absolutely. directly afterwards also. Your rumor is correct, though, actually. Uh, Joe Rohde, who is the... Imagineer that created both uh, that's, the that's Everest awesome. ride as well as uh, Animal Kingdom has tweeted multiple times that he vows to fix the Yeti. Oh, and, thank you, Joe. And Whoever he already has are. a solution, apparently. It's just a matter of when they will take the time to do it. I Shut it down. Fix it up. Let's do it. <laughs> Shut it down. But it's a really cool thing. If you haven't seen it previously, there's probably a bunch of YouTube videos out there. Go, you know, Google oh. Yeti with swinging Nuts. arms and you can find it and see it. He's going to catch you. So I mean, there's no doubt in your mind that he's going to swoop you right out of that car. Yes. Despite he's, your arm, despite your shoulder. <laughs> no, it's a lap restraint. He's going to get you. He's, he's going to get you. He's plucking you right out. There's no doubt in my mind. So that's our next top 10. So that's number 30 through 21. But next time we talk to you, we're going to be through the roof because we'll be 20 days away from vacation. 
and uh, even more excited. But as always, you know, like us on Facebook, you know, find us on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to our channel here, and we'll have more great content coming to you soon. We appreciate your support as always. <laughs> All right, we appreciate everybody. Have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.